<clears throat> Hi, I'm Dan. Welcome to the Makerspace. We're going to be talking about some of the things you should know before you become a member here. So, there are two really important rules you have to know to be a Makerspace member. If you remember nothing else I tell you tonight, you got to know the two rules. Rule number one, super important, be excellent to each other. Rule number two, just as important, don't be a dick. If you can follow those two rules, nothing else I tell you is going to be of real concern because you won't break any of the other rules because you just need to remember to be excellent to everybody else. Everyone's here to have fun. You keep that in mind and you'll have a good time. If you're ever in a situation where you think you might be a dick but you're not sure how not to be a dick, ask yourself this one question. It'll help guide you on the straight and narrow path towards being excellent. Ask yourself, what would Mr. Rogers do? And that will help you not be a dick in every possible circumstance. All right, now the younger members may be asking themselves, who is Mr. Rogers? At this point, go to the internet, pull out your phone, look him up. He's an amazing man. He taught kids to always be nice to each other. You're going to get a lot of emails from us when you sign up tonight. The first thing you're going to get is a welcome email. It's going to have links to all our websites and our Facebook page and our wiki and our member handbook and stuff in it. Um, you're going to get a receipt for your first month's dues saying that you paid us and you're going to get invited to our Google Groups. There's two groups. One of them's a public group that anybody can read. You post cool things on there showing off stuff you've done. And then there's a members only group. Only members can read that. We use it for boring stuff like, hey, Space Improvement Day is coming up, we're having elections, that sort of thing. Uh, we always bill from the first of the month at the Makerspace. So if you signed up in the first half of the month, we're going to round down and you'll next owe us money on the following month. And if you sign up in the second half of the month, we're going to round up. You get the rest of this month for free and you owe us money in a month and a half, basically. Um, there is a control panel you can log into to manage your finances and your Makerspace membership. It is members.milwaukeemakerspace.org. You can go there and if your address, your phone number, uh, your email, any of those things change, you can update them. Or if you have an upcoming invoice you need to pay, you can pay it right on the internet. We really like it when you pay it using the website because that means the billing system reconciles your account automatically and we don't have to figure out if you paid your um, dues at the end of the month by rummaging through a bunch of envelopes. Your invoices are going to be sent 10 days before the due date. The due date is the first of the month, so generally on the 20th of the previous month, somewhere around there, you're going to get an email for a membership renewal explaining how much you owe. Uh, there'll be a link on the email to that member control panel I just mentioned, so you can click the link, pay your invoice right online, and you're taken care of. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, if you don't want to pay on the internet, you can send us cash or check in an envelope in the Dropbox, which is right next to me at the board member desk. Your invoice is due on the first of the month, so if it's the second and you haven't given us money yet, you are now late, you're technically a suspended member, and you can't come in and use the tools until you pay us again. We won't cancel the, your key until the seventh of the month. The, the reason there's a window between the first and the seventh is so the treasurer, who's a volunteer, has time to go through everybody's accounts and make sure they're updated and we fix any billing problems. But you need to pay us by the first so the treasurer has time to do his or her job. If you don't pay us by the first, you're late. Even if your key still works, you've now caused more work for the treasurer and that's not excellent. If you still haven't paid us by the seventh of the month, that means your membership will be automatically suspended and you're no longer a member of the Makerspace until such time as you come in and give us money again. Door keys. You're going to get a magical little key fob, just like this blue one here, when you sign up to be a member, and it opens all the doors to the building 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. There's a little gray plastic box next to the door. Hold your fob up to it. The screen on the box is going to show your name and when we think your dues are paid until. If you hold your fob up and it says expired user, that means we think you didn't pay your bill on time. Usually that means you actually did not pay your bill on time, but sometimes it means the treasurer screwed something up and I owe you an apology. 
In either case, if something's not working with your key fob, best thing to do is send an email to the board, info at milwaukeemakerspace.org. That email address is written up all over the building, it's on the business cards right here, and it's going to be in the welcome email we send you when you sign up. Your door key, as I already said, it works 24 hours a day, every day of the year. The building never closes, so you can come in. If you want to work on odd hours, that's fine. We just ask that there are some basic uh, courtesies you observe. The first one is that if you're going to make a lot of noise, something that can be heard outside the four walls of the building, try to do it between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Reason being is we have neighbors, residential neighbors, we don't want them to get woken up in the middle of the night by a loud banging or grinding or scraping noise or whatever. And uh, if we make noise during the daytime, it keeps us on pretty good terms with the neighbors. Uh, the other thing to note is if you happen to be the last one in the building late at night, go around and just pull on all the doors, make sure that they've shut all the way and they're locked and turn the light switches off so we're not burning a lot of electricity while no one's in the building. If you're going to be here on a busy uh, time of day, like after a weeknight on a Tuesday or something, uh, it, chances are the parking lot is going to be full. So we ask that you please park on the wrong side of the street. Uh, what I mean by that is this neighborhood has alternate side parking, so on odd days you're supposed to park on the odd side of the street, even days, even side of the street. Uh, that only is in effect late at night from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Since members are generally not going to be here that late, we like to park on the odd side of the street on even days and vice versa so that the neighbors who live here, they can park on the correct side of the street and they don't have to move their cars. Who are you beating? Uh, safety. There are sheets posted up around the building, sheets on all the doors, that say who to call at the top of them. They have phone numbers on them for the fire department, the police department, uh, EMS services, any of those sorts of things. If you have a real emergency, uh, the gas company's on there, do you smell gas leaking? Uh, but they also have phone numbers on there for urgent but not quite emergency situations. So say the, the toilet is overflowing in one of the bathrooms, there's a water leak, something that really needs to get taken care of right now, but it's not quite a 911 situation. There are board members' phone numbers on there, the building manager's phone number is on there, so you can call us and get somebody down here to take care of a problem right away if it is urgent. If it's less urgent still, the board's, phone, uh, the board's email address is on there. There's that info at address that I mentioned earlier. So you can send us an email and we'll take care of it as Before soon as uh, we have time. Track. Usually yeah. within a couple hours. Uh, in addition to the who to call sheets that you see around the building, there's one by every exit. We also have fire extinguishers and first aid kits. Uh, we have used both of those before in this building, so don't think you won't use them. Trust me, it has happened. I've personally been responsible for one of those instances. Um, what I like to tell people is if you're going to do anything where you could imagine yourself needing a fire extinguisher or a first aid kit, figure out where the two closest are to you before you start doing that thing. So if you're going to start working with sharp tools in the wood shop, know where the closest first aid kits are before you start working with those sharp tools. Just in case you do cut yourself, it's good to know where the band-aids are and not have to run around in a circle while you're bleeding. Perhaps even more important with the fire extinguishers, if something catches on fire, it's a really good idea to know where the closest fire extinguisher is and not have to wonder. <laughs> if you do end up having a situation where you need a first aid kit or a fire extinguisher, first things first, make sure everyone is safe after you've taken care of that. Then send the board an email letting us know what happened because we probably have to either get a fire extinguisher recharged or we have to restock the first aid kit so it's there for the next person who needs it. A quick overview of the sort of legal structure of the space and uh, how we're organized. So we are a non-profit, non-stock corporation. What that means is we have no external third party that owns the makerspace and controls it. Uh, the makerspace is owned by every dues paying member in good standing and uh, they get absolutely nothing in exchange for their ownership. We're not allowed to pay them any dividends or income or something because we're a nonprofit corporation. So the basic outcome of that is nobody makes money off the makerspace and nobody's getting rich. Uh, everybody who's involved in this is doing it just because we want to have fun making things 
and uh, for the love of the making, so to speak. Uh, we don't have any employees. We have uh, a seven-member board of directors that runs the building and uh, pays the taxes and manages the bank accounts and those sorts of things. But we try to do as little work as possible because all of the board members are volunteer. Uh, they don't get paid for their time, they have day jobs, and they even have to pay the same $40 a month to be a member that you do. So if you happen to walk into the bathroom and see that it's dirty, we don't pay anyone to be a janitor. So we encourage you to please grab a mop and clean the bathroom to your satisfaction because no one else is going to do it if you don't. Um, we call that sort of organizational structure a duocracy. People who want to see things get done, the people who put in the effort, they're the ones who decide what gets done. If you have an awesome idea to make the space better, we think that's great. We encourage people to take their ideas and bring them to life here. We just ask that you subject your idea to the Be Excellent test. What I mean by that is, if you're going to do something, think about the other people that might be impacted, and then communicate with them, ask them, share your idea before you do it. So if you had a great idea to reorganize all the cabinets in the, wood, in the craft lab, what you don't want is a bunch of people to come into the space and find you ripping cabinets off the wall with no prior notice. It would be better to talk to them and say, hey, I'm thinking about rearranging the cabinets, and then you'll generally get one of two reactions. Either somebody will tell you, hey, that's a great idea, how can I help? And now you have to do less work. Or they'll say, well, you know, we had that idea too, but it didn't work, and here's why. Now they just saved you a whole bunch of effort. The last thing to mention is the, uh, the sort of budgeting of the makerspace. So you pay us $40 every month, and the vast majority of that money goes to cover only three things. The first thing it covers is the mortgage on this building. The next thing it pays for are the utilities on this building. And the last thing it pays for is the insurance on this building. Uh, what your dues don't pay for are most of the tools in this building. Uh, almost all of our tools are owned by individual members who loan them to the group and agree to share them with everybody else for free. So if you're ever using a tool in the makerspace, remember that it is someone's private property and try to treat it with respect if you can. <clears throat> area funding. So most of your money, as I said, goes for the building, but the last $5 you pay us every month gets handed out as area funding. What that means is you can give $1 to five different areas, or $5 to one area, or you can mix and match and anything in between. Um, and we hand that money out to the areas to pay for consumables, things like glue, uh, sandpaper, blades, anything that will just tend to get destroyed in the course of being used, the areas can replace those parts as they need to. Um, and it's up to you where your money goes. So when you sign up, you'll be asked to choose five areas, and you can change those later on at any point you want by logging into the member control panel and deciding where your money goes. Training. You can use any tools you want, as long as they're hand tools, when you're a member. We trust you to swing a hammer and figure it out on your own. But if it is a power tool, if it plugs into the wall, you need to be trained on it before you can use it. Um, we're not going to teach you how to be a master carpenter, but we will generally teach you three things. How not to hurt yourself, how not to hurt other people, and how not to damage the equipment. If you want to get trained on a tool, the best way to get trained is either come to the Tuesday night meeting and you can stand up at the end of the meeting and say, hey, I'm wondering if someone can sign me off in the weld shop tonight. Or you can post on the members uh, Google group, which you just got invited to tonight, and you can say, hi, I just joined. I'm wondering when someone's going to be around who can train me in the wood shop. And then usually someone else will respond to the date that they'll be in the building and you guys can mesh your schedules together. So some of the more popular areas of the space, like the wood shop and the laser lab, will do their trainings on a schedule. So once or twice a month, they'll post in advance on the message board, and it'll usually be listed on the wall outside the area that, say, on Wednesday at 6 p.m., there will be a training in the laser area for those popular parts of the space so the champion can get, like, five or ten people together at one point in time and not have to spend quite so much of their volunteer time helping train other people. Um, in general, the people who train you are going to be volunteers, so it's best if you work with their schedule. They don't have any obligation to meet you when it's convenient for you. You need to be accommodating of them. In all likelihood, the person who trains you is going to be what we call an area champion. 
Um, the champions, there's about 30 of them spread throughout the building, and what they are is they're Makerspace members who have a lot of experience and familiarity with a group of tools or a, a medium or a style of working. So they're somebody who knows everything about wood, they know everything about metal, maybe they know everything about uh, pottery. They're, they're very familiar with one area of making and they're a really good resource to learn things from if you want to do something but you don't know how to do something. The area champions can usually train on every tool in their area and um, they'll generally have a sign posted up in their area with their names on it and usually an email address or some other way of getting in contact with them. There is one recurring event uh, as a Makerspace member that it's good for you to know about. That event is Space Improvement Day. It happens at the end of every month on a Saturday or a Sunday. And basically what we do is we invite the members to come in and do all of the maintenance work that uh, has to be done to keep the space running. So things like vacuuming the carpets, mopping the floor, cleaning the tables, cleaning the bathrooms, rearranging tool racks, uh, anything of that nature. So it's stuff that nobody wants to do, but it has to get done anyway, and we invite everybody to come in, and as a reward for coming in to clean the space, we buy dinner for everybody. Usually we'll have a pizza party or a cookout or something along those lines. And it's a really good time to meet other people, of, uh, other members of the space who maybe have different interests than you do, and you can sort of cross-pollinate and talk to crafters who might have a craft that you've never heard of, but you learn something interesting. It's not mandatory that you attend, but we really, really like it if you do because this whole place doesn't work if you don't volunteer your time. So, Space Improvement Day happens between 1 and 4 p.m., and there is absolutely no making allowed in the building between noon and 5 p.m. on Space Improvement Day. You can't work on your own projects during Space Improvement Day hours. You have to come into the, if you're in the building, you have to come in and just work on making the space cleaner, more organized, better. The last thing for me to talk about today is parking permits. A common problem that will happen in a makerspace environment is you have to work on a project, maybe you have some cut pieces of wood that need to be clamped and glued and left overnight for the glue to dry. If you want to leave a project in progress in the building and then go home, that's fine. We just ask that you fill out one of these green permits, which has a spot for your name, and the date and uh, some contact information so somebody can get a hold of you. And you can throw that green permit on your project and it, you're now allowed to claim a workbench or some other public space for up to 24 hours so you can go home, let the glue dry, come back the next day, finish your project. Um, there's racks full of these throughout the building. If you need more than 24 hours to work on a project, that's fine. You can extend these parking permits for up to 30 days by talking to a board member or an area champion from the area you're working in. And they can sign this to extend it for up to 30 days at their discretion. So if they tell you the area is crowded, it doesn't have enough room, then you have to find some other way of completing your project. But if they can find a space for you, you can work on something over multiple nights. Um, if you leave a project out in a public working space and it has an expired permit on it, or if it doesn't have a permit, what'll happen is you're gonna get one of these red parking tickets, which is a notice that basically says, hey, this shouldn't be here. Um, if your property sits out with a parking ticket on it and you walk by, you should remove that property from the building as soon as you can. Otherwise, if it sits out with a ticket on it for a full week, it's going to get moved into the impound lot, which is a little roped off corner of the East Room where unclaimed property goes. If it sits in the impound lot for a month and it still doesn't get picked up, it's either going to be given away to another member who wants it or we're going to have to throw it out to make room for more stuff in the building. So if you don't abandon your property, use the parking permits, then it's less work for me to throw out your stuff and I don't have to give you the heartbreak of having your stuff getting thrown out. So that's how you, we deal with member uh, space in the public working areas. You're also allowed to have some private member storage space with your membership. 
So if you're a new member and you'd like to claim a storage space, you need to talk to the facilities director of the makerspace. So either uh, meet them after a meeting in person or send them an email and they will work with you to find a shelf that you can use or a locker to store your property while you're not in the building. Um, you cannot claim a shelf on your own. You have to go work with the facilities director. They'll show you what is available right now, get you uh, logged into the system so we know where your storage is. Uh, the member storage space you get is yours to do whatever you want with. You can keep projects that are in progress, you can keep tools, you can keep materials, uh, anything you want for as long as you want, yep, it's up yep, to you. Yeah, and uh, with all that having been said, I think that's about covers the covers the list. Okay, so now that you've sat through all my boring crap, you can take a breather, because I'm done. So welcome to the Milwaukee Makerspace.